This meeting is being recorded. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. My name is Petra Foster and I am the owner of a CQC registered supported living service based in the Midlands. And I'm also a consultant where I help um, other social entrepreneurs, business owners, property investors, individuals who actually have who want to set up a CQC registered supported living service and today we're going to be speaking to one of my amazing clients Tando who's going to be sharing her experience of working with me and what she's been able to accomplish okay so just a little background about me so I have been um, operating in supported living now for some years and I love absolutely love what I do and I um, provide care and housing to people that have got complex mental health needs 16 to 17 year olds and also learning disabilities, autism and sensory impairment. Okay, so I actually help people to pass their CQC um, application, pass their CQC in interview, and also tender for local authority contracts. So I do get a lot of people say, oh Petra, you know, I've got a house, I've rented a house, but I haven't got anyone in. Have you got a contract though? That's the question, <laughs> all right? And then I also help you with uh, costings for your service users as well as basically the organizational structure and how to set up the business and also how to make sure that you fill your house okay so we're going to be speaking to Tando who's going to be showing her experience as being a CQC living supported business owner and also what it was like working with me all right so hi Tando hi hi Petra thank you for having me you're welcome how are you doing I'm good thank you I'm good. good. I'm just looking forward to this. Good. I must say, like, you have just been such a pleasure to work with. Um, oh, like Tando, she's so beautiful, so quiet, <laughs> but she just gets things done behind the scenes. And that is so important. So do you want to just share with us um, just a bit about your experience in now becoming a provider? In fact, how long were you thinking about being a provider before you contacted me? So, you know, I had spent so many months thinking, you know what, I need a bit of financial freedom and own something of my own. And I, can, and I need some help with setting everything up. So I was just online searching everywhere. And then I bumped into you. I think it was on Clubhouse, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think you were speaking to a bunch of other property owners or people in that kind of similar industry. And I was like, oh, this lady, I love the way that she's speaking. <laughs> That's <laughs> what she's talking about. So I finally got, I think I got hold of you or kept your details for about two months. Mm -hmm. And I just spent some time thinking about it. I was like, you know what? I should just stop thinking. Let me just find out and get a chance to speak to her. So I messaged you on, on Instagram, actually. Mm -hmm. I think after two months. And then you just were like, if you don't book an appointment, like tomorrow. And I was like, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went for it and you know ever then since then and you were quite informative you gave me all the details or you know rough figures of how much I could potentially make and you know you were quite honest and how it's a lot of work and like it's not for the lazy and you just <laughs> gave me it all and I was thinking after am I doing the right thing but I just felt a good conviction that I should just go for it that is so oh, funny yeah. because you know yeah. what on, I have to be honest like on consultations I always say what is your work ethic because yeah it's it's not easy it's not yeah. easy this this business is not easy and you have to literally yeah. be up day and night working but it does pay off it does pay off yeah. so when did you start working with me now do you remember I think was it like, it was like last year May like May wasn't it yeah so it was May and so you went through the um, kind of the CQC application phase, the supporting documents, because I do have templates mm -hmm. in, in terms of how to fill it out and everything. How did you find the, the application process? How did you find that? So, I mean, obviously, luckily, I've got a bit of a health background. So I could under, under, kind of understand what mm -hmm. you know, was required for me to fill in. But I think the templates that you gave and it was quite descriptive on what you wanted us to put in the information on there. So I found that quite, um, it was quite easy to follow mm -hmm. and you explained it quite well. Obviously it was a lot of work 
And I think you gave us dead deadlines, like, you know, and you'd be like, it's Friday, have you done it yet? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, nearly. So um, I think the deadline setting goals being there made it quite easy. I think you, you made it into small chunks. So we're able to like finish it all on time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like working according to deadlines. So it, was, it worked quite well for me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I had to do my own research, which was quite helpful because at least I get to know what I'm going to be doing, really. So I found it quite doable, but obviously it takes a lot of your time. I was doing it on weekends or after work. I was putting in that work. <laughs> right. And to admit yeah. that, you, I would ask you a question, like, you know, what's and you'd reply me like at 2 a.m. I'm like, she's still awake. <laughs> You know what? It's important. Like, if you're going to trust me to be your consultant, I'm going to be there for you 100%. Like, you are just not alone. And that's important because, like, when I first set up my first house, which was um, a house for young people, I was completely by myself. I had no one to ask, no one to speak to. So, at least now, I want to be that person that you can just ask and I'm always available. So, that's important. Yeah, yeah. Good. So tell me about the um, the interview then. How did you find the, the interview with, the, with CQC? Because let's, just to explain kind of the process, yeah. when you complete the application phase, you then get an email to say, yes, um, you've, passed this, you've passed the application phase, or you may get an email to say they're asking for additional information. So the email you want to yeah. get is yes, your email has your application has been processed and it's been sent yeah. to the regional CQC area where they where your local authority is. So that's the email that you want to get. And then you're going to be doing an interview. So with it comes to the interview, because um, Tando, Tando is the director and she's also the nominated individual as well as the registered manager. So you had two interviews, didn't that, didn't you? So tell me how they went. And also, how did you prepare for those interviews and how did I help to pray for that? Yeah, so obviously, once you send off your application forms to CQC, you know, you have to make sure everything is correct. And then when they're happy with that, they send you for an interview. And I think that can take some time to get the interview day. I think mine took about two months after that. They told me that it was everything was OK. And then you're given like a date when the interview will be. And then obviously Petra was able to help me by compiling a set of questions or practice questions that have been used before by other clients. And, you know, during the interview, they were exactly what I received, what I was asked, really. Mm-hmm. I think I spent like a day, you know, revising them through and then we'd have sessions with you where you would ask us all the questions, like an almost mock interview, <laughs> which was quite nerve wracking. But you know you're able to explain the reasons why we have to answer this way and so that we understand it as well because we're going to be actually having to live up to those questions anyways and I think um the interview for me took about an hour and I know it took an hour they asked me for both for the director and for the manager and nominated individual and luckily mine was quite um you know quite an easy flow and the guy was quite cooperative and I didn't, it was almost like a conversation, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It wasn't to, you know, what's this? He was almost having a normal conversation with me. Mm-hmm. But all the practice questions that I had were asked and, you know, just took it there. And mm-hmm. like, when you told me your interview was an hour, I was like, what? Because my nominated individual interview was two hours. It was two hours and it was <laughs> really... <laughs> but then as you said you've got a care background which is brilliant now I do not have a care background so don't think that you have to have a care background to set up this type of business um so Tando was able to do the registered managers interview as well as the nominated nominated individual interview because she has the, the care background and the care qualifications as well as a registered manager but for me just the nominated individual interview yeah which still surprised you, me. <laughs> I know but then didn't you get um told that you passed on the same call yeah so after the and then end of the call the guy was like oh you know I don't see why not I'm gonna pass you so I was in the certificate tomorrow and then I was like oh okay <laughs> that was just like amazing I think my certificate yeah. I don't think we knew for about a week or so. 
yeah yeah about a week or so and that's the thing like when it comes to the cqc interview process you literally don't know who you're going to get as an inspector if they're going to be grueling if they're going to be difficult if they're going to be you you just don't know Mm -hmm. but you have to prepare you have to prepare for this interview because what you don't want to do is fail because if you fail the interview you have to two things you can do you can um you can kind of contest it or you just have to start from scratch again if you start from Mm -hmm. scratch again you will not have the same cqc inspector doing the interview all right but we don't want to we don't want to talk about that we want to pass it first time and that's what i'm here to help you to do so after so during that time now because you worked really you worked really hard so during that time the interview process you were tendering for contracts and you were also looking for property weren't you so do you want to share with us kind of um the tender how you felt about the whole tendering process and why that why that's important yeah um, i think you always emphasize the importance of tendering because you know that's how you get your referrals really and having that ready before you even open the house and before you pass the cqc it just makes the process a lot more easier for you so i spent a lot of time you know searching on these portals you know signing up and letting them know about my service or what's about to come and then i think you gave like a template on how to answer the the tendering questions and it's a long process and I think we're doing like a question a day but you know just putting that out there made the process quite easier because I think I got accepted to some uh, to one tender before I even passed the CQC on conditional basis on that you know I get the CQC registration which kind of makes you feel a bit more at ease that you know you are likely to get clients and get those referrals so it's a long process because you've got to answer each question in depth and, you know, attach all these additional information that they require from you. But it does make, you know, make it a bit more guaranteed that you will get some clients. So it's mm-hmm. very, very important to do that while it's you're doing your whole application or waiting for your interview. Absolutely. Because I think some of the questions yeah. like 500 to 1000 words, aren't they the questions? And you've got to answer yeah. them really in depth. Um, so, yeah, I, that's brilliant. And there's even though it took you two months to get your interview you were very very steadfast when it came to applying for those contracts and then tell us about the the property you you had as well how did you find speaking to um agents and landlords about having your property because obviously as supported living you do need a property to put them in so uh, for me, we've, we, we've got, I've got several properties now, which is, which is great. So all of my properties are like five and four bedroom properties. And, you know, you have to be able to speak to a landlord or an estate agent in a way that they're going to have to understand that you're going to manage the property and that their property is not going to be damaged. Okay. Yeah. Because people do have a negative concept around housing people that have got mental health issues so how did you navigate that so yeah you are right you know I um had to send out a bunch of emails to different letting agents and landlords you know make a lot of phone calls you had to use your own initiative really Mm -hmm. and I think I had to even go to the state agents myself and try to explain to them and how I plan to meet the need in the community and that they are guaranteed to get their rent you know you have to try and convince them because they are thinking like you said they're going to trash the house up and that's their biggest concerns and most landlords don't really know what supported living is mm-hmm. so i was able to let's say after reviewing speak to the landlord themselves and try and make them understand that you know they're going to be guaranteed rent for this number of years that these people are looking for, to stay for more than two to three years because it's going to be their home you know that's mm-hmm. the that's the plan and just do a lot of convincing and it's good to find a, a property before you even pass or something in standby just to let the lender know that hopefully in about two three months i would like this property ready and i think i chose more like hmo compliant kind of properties mm. and i think some of them were not hmo but um you can obviously get the license yourself and make it up to hmo standard depending on your local authority what they require from you but yeah just a lot of checked on Facebook, I checked on, um, you know, online, even Petra referred to me, some landlords 
that had properties in my area, which was quite helpful because at least it made the process easier and they were able to refer me to someone else, a friend. And then now I've got this portfolio of these landlords that I can just call if I've got a property in you know, three months' time. <laughs> no, that's great. So, yeah. That is great because, yeah, so I do, like, for my clients, I do advertise on Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook asking for cl- asking for properties for my clients because, you know, people, I've got a, an average size following and, you know, people mm-hmm. do listen <laughs> and watch. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it's, it's great. And that's what you do need. You do need to have um, a list of landlords and agents that understand your business model yeah. and that are, are willing to... Um, give you the properties so for us right now oh my god now I'm thinking about it actually we've um we've actually got three properties from the same person actually I just kind of realized that yeah 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 from the same yeah from the same person um which is really good and it, there's no hassle it's the same it's the same agreement that we have from all mm-hmm. you know all of them so it works really really well yeah so so tell me now then so I want to know what what was the feeling or the emotion you had when you actually passed the CQC interview? The like the CQC uh, process itself? Yeah, I can't believe it because of the amount of work you've got to do to put in, I felt so relieved. I, you know, I had to I'm Petra saying to me that, you know, celebrate every little goal that you make. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna go, you know, take my family out for dinner or something just to celebrate because I just felt so relieved. I felt so mm-hmm. happy. But I felt nervous because I was thinking now the work begins as well. <laughs> you've got the CQC registration, but now you've got to actually do it. Yeah. You know, it was just so surreal. It was. I felt so good. It felt really good. And I the thing is, I felt all confident and ready. Yeah. Mm. So after you got CQC registered, how soon did you get your first person? And in fact, did you get the contract first before getting the first person? How did that work? So um, I think even during the whole application process, you would emphasize how it's important to contact social workers and people in the community or the mental health teams and the commissioners and everyone. So I was already kind of in contact with them and keeping them up to date that, you know, I've got my interview next week. I've got, you know, I've just passed, you know, and they were like just almost as well on the loop with me. Mm-hmm. So as soon as I basically had got my certificate, I let them know I had my referral over like the next week. Wow. And I the, the month after. So it that was, was fantastic. So fast. <laughs> that is fun. And it goes like people always ask, but how long, you know, how long um, you know, am I am I gonna take to get someone? You li- you are literally gonna get someone immediately as soon as you pass, because it's something mm-hmm. that the councils and commissioners and the local authority they want, they need um not just any provider. But they need CQC registered providers. They need providers that um, that care, that have got everything in place in terms, in terms of compliance. And mm-hmm. you know, you have to be consistent at the same time, but they want this. This, this business is really about relationships, as Tando's been speaking about. She t- it took yeah. months for us to build these relationships. So you mm-hmm. got your first one now. Oh my mm-hmm. God. You got your first one and you were still working, weren't you? So yeah. share with us what that was like working whilst having someone move in. <laughs> it was just, you know, the most challenging time of my life, I'm being honest, you know, but I was, I could see the bigger picture that I've got to, it's going to be a stage and Petra would call me and be like, you know, how are you doing? Because I know you were telling me that you went through the same thing. I was you know, exhausted. Was, yeah. I was just exhausted and I was just around the clock, but I just knew it was part of the process. Mm-hmm. And um, lucky enough, I could work from home sometimes. So I was working from home some days and family and friends were helping in the process, but it was just on the run. But as soon as I started to obviously get the right stuff and everything, it got a bit better and you just get on with it. And, you know, they're just normal people as well who've moved in, you know, into this property and they, they want to just get on with it as well themselves. Mm-hmm. So just had to learn as I go and just, I don't want to say winging it, but you, you feel a bit like an imposter at the time. But you I just, do. yeah. You do, <laughs> you do. And with, if you're a perfectionist, this is not mm-hmm. going to work for you because you have to, you're learning as you go. 
yeah. and you have to really get to know like the different personalities of the service users because you've got all males haven't you yeah I've got all males all males, males. so yeah. you were working at the time mm-hmm. how many service users did you have before you quit your job because you are now a full-time CEO aren't you yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what did I always say? Didn't I always say to you when you're going to leave? When you're going to leave, have you written your resignation letter? <laughs> yeah, I think you made us even write before we even passed the CQC, like put a date down of when you're going to be fully employed and you know fully self-employed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Petra, but I can't just. You're like, no, just do it. And I manifested it really. But you know, I think after two clients, I was able to then um, leave to concentrate because obviously couldn't juggle both at the same time mm-hmm. and um you just have to be quite you know watch your finances in that way and I was able to ensure that I'll be fine good when I good. left and I had two clients and it was enough for me to continue to to do it full time uh for what I remember as well with the first services you had obviously so what I do help with as well is costings for service users mm-hmm. to make sure that the service user one is is has got a contracted amount of hours per mm-hmm. week okay um how many staff how many one-to-one hours that that person needs how many mm-hmm. staff that you need um and the costings also has to cover a lot of other elements to make sure that you're getting the right amount of um, income for this service user how yeah. did you find the whole costings um process with the, with the council um so Obviously, I was quite new to that world of doing costings and everything. Mm-hmm. And with your with your sessions and your videos that you did upload, I was able to continuously, you know, rewatch them to know how to cost my service user accordingly. Because I've got to make sure that I can also provide the best service for them. Mm-hmm. You know, paying staff and for the accommodation, everything. So, um, when I presented it to the council, whoever I was speaking to at the time. It is a back and forth thing. You've got to negotiate on mm-hmm. on what's best for you, really. And just remember that you've got to survive as well. So you've got to just make sure it's costed accordingly. And I think with your advice, I always ask you, Petra, they've said this, and you'd be like, you know, try this. You, mm-hmm. you know, you've got to be fair because you want to build a relationship with them as well. But you've got to make sure you can actually look after this service user in particular according to their specific needs. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. and... At one point, like you got your first service user and then you were getting referrals. How often were you getting referrals? Because you'll be like emailing me, Tando, I've got another referral. I'm like, what? Like, how often yeah. were you getting them? Uh, probably weekly. I would mm-hmm. get a referral weekly. And, you know, and also I didn't want to just pick anyone just because it's referrals, but you have to assess them, make sure that they are suitable and compatible with the others that you've got in the house. But yeah, it was literally weekly. It like, was, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So yeah. you've filled your house now, haven't you? Your house is full now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So um most people, so when people so it just depends. Okay. So mm-hmm. I've got clients that have got a social care background, and I've got clients that don't have a social care background. So the clients that like yourself that have a social care background, mm-hmm. you was the registered manager. Okay, so you're the registered manager. You was responsible for the regulated activities, the staffing and everything. Okay, Mm -hmm. and I always tell my clients, right? I always tell them, you are a business owner. You are not an employee. So you are a CEO, you are a director. So now, now that you've got one or two people in, it's important for you now to transition from being a worker and transition into being the actual boss okay that's yeah. important because people always say to me gosh because especially if you like see me on Instagram like I'm always going on holidays I'm shopping I'm having lunch in the daytimes and a glass of wine in the afternoons and people say Petra how many hours a week do you actually work and right now probably two hours a week <laughs> I probably work two hours a week. The only time that I work a lot of hours is when is when I've got a new house and I've got to set up the new house. Yeah. But in terms of like physical working, no, 
sometimes no hours, no hours a week. Okay. So my Tandal said earlier that she wanted, she wanted um, freedom and freedom is super important. So so many business owners, not just supported living business owners, but so many business owners work in their businesses as well. And I'm always here to tell you that you don't have to, you don't have to, okay? So I'm so proud of you, Tando, because you have now hired your manager, haven't you? How, how do you feel like, cause you've kind of, you know, it's tricky because like you get to know your service users. Yeah. You know, you like them, you build a relationship with them. You're speaking to them on a, on a, on a, on, on a daily basis. But now you have to kind of let that connection go and just hand over oh. everything to the new manager. So how, how are you feeling, like, honestly about that? Um, at first, I was, you know, looking forward to it until it really happened. And I was like, wait, <laughs> I'm not going to see these people as often. It is difficult because, you know, you've worked so hard for this and it's almost like your baby, isn't it? And you just yes. feel like you don't want to let go. But like you would always say to me, I've got to delegate these tasks and let them not micromanage really and just let the person get on with it because you are hiring a skilled person who's got that experience mm -hmm. in you know in this field and they've done it longer than you, you know, so they know what they're doing. But I've just had to let go. It's been difficult. Um, like today, you know, I'm I'm at home and I'm mm -hmm. working from home and just trying to look for something else, you know, to make sure they got everything done. And I got this time to to do this interview with you but I'm just thinking are they okay in the house is he okay <laughs> I have to just stop checking up you know to see you just to let them get on with it but it's difficult but it's liberating as well it is it is yeah because you definitely yeah. it is liberating and with that yeah. liberation I know that you've made some um life adjustments which we're not going to talk about on here but mm -hmm. do you have any holidays booked because you've literally been working for a whole year yeah, <laughs> I do. I took a break, so I am going away in November. I'm looking forward to it. Good, good, mm -hmm. good. And that's what it's about, you know. And I just love it. I just love the fact that you know I've helped you to really start this business, but grow this business because you're you're in, you're going through a, a a second phase now um, of mm -hmm. this business and you know, you're not going to be working all of those hours. You're going to have to find a hobby or something to do, you know, because you're going to have so much yeah. free time. <laughs> I have to start looking. I no, know. It's, it's really good. And I think it's so good to have someone else to to be there for you and hold your hand through the whole process. Mm -hmm. Because you would call me sometimes and I was just so stressed, especially when I had the first service fees. I didn't know what I was doing. Like, you know what? That's normal. That's fine. Just do mm -hmm. what you can. And you do figure it out as you go. Um, but it's just good to, to have someone that's been there and done that. I'd be like, yes. this is normal. You'd be like, yeah, this is normal. And I'd be like, is it normal? <laughs> you know, but just that assurance and seeing someone else that's done it, mm -hmm. you know, as well. That's what really inspired me to to have you as a mentor. Like, you know, she's done it before and she had no health and social care business, you know, background or mm -hmm. anything like that. So it's quite helpful. You need someone to be there for you. So you don't make those mistakes, like major mistakes that, mm -hmm. that can be easily made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Tando, for um just being open and sharing. And I'm just I'm just excited about your future, you know, what you're going to be share with me in a couple of months. And I'm just really excited. So mm -hmm. if you're watching, you're thinking you know something. Um mm -hmm. I do want to start a CQC registered supported living service and I do want a mentor because I am a mentor. You know, some people just offer you CQC advice. Yeah. And what I've seen is that no one helps you with the entire process to get in of the house, to get the, the contracts, the local authorities, how what to write in your emails, how to do your costings. Mm. It's more than just the CQC. So I've been working with Tando for over a year now over yeah. here um but she's extended with me as well because of, because going through the second phase of you know of her journey with the business so it's more than just getting people into a house it's it's way more than that so if you're yeah. actually looking for a consultant or mentor to walk you through the process hold your hand through the entire process 
just send me a message or you can just um, go to petrafoster.com and I'll look forward to helping you to either leave your job if you're currently working and just expand your business if you have other businesses. All right. So my name is Petra, Petra Foster and thank you so much, Tando. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.